You are here today with Omar Tyree, a West Philadelphian who moved uptown to Mount Airy, West Oak Lane, and Germantown in the 1970s. In fact, it was the late 1970s. I was born in 69 and moved to Mount Airy from West Philly about 1978. So I did nine and nine, nine in West Philly, nine in Mount Airy, but I still had all my family in West Philly. So really, I would say more like 65% West Philly, 35% Mount Airy, but that Mount Airy part was important because that's where Fly Girl came from. But that was the place up there uh, in Mount Airy, West Oak Lane, Germantown, where Fly Girl came into play because by the time I got to be a teenager, I couldn't be no nappy-headed, you know, peasy, West Philly, hard rock dude. I had to get fly and sophisticated with a haircut. And this haircut right here, this style, man, we call them uh, uh, high tapers or whatever you call them in Philly, round tapers. Then we had the block haircut in Philly. It's like the same style we had in the 80s, man. No lie, this is how we rocked it. And so, yeah, Fly Girl came about because we were in the flyest neighborhood in Philadelphia. That's why they called Uptown. We moved on up like the Jefferson Show to these hot areas. We had grass and trees and lawns. I didn't have that in West Philly, boy. We had one tree on my block in front of my house, 755 North uh, 38th Street in West Philly because my grandfather ran anybody away that would try to swing on that tree or break the tree down because in the hood, that's what they do. They tear up everything. And I'm here to say it because I'm from the hood. So I'm not hating on the hood, I'm from the hood. People don't know that, but I'm telling you now, you know, because I got to move on up like the Jeffersons and get a little fine tuning. And that's where that Fly Girl book came from, man. By the time we hit 1984, Boy, we were flyer than ever. And we were in the neighborhood where girls can get their hair done and get their teeth fixed and get some extra clothes, you know, and walk around all prissy and whatnot, pop taking them here and taking them there. And I'm talking about, dude, these girls knew they were good looking. And guys were coming from all over the city to talk to these Mount Airy, West Oak Lane, and Germantown girls. And I happened to live there already. And so I wanted to write about that, man, and just capture it uh, in a book. And it became a legendary book. Now we want to make it a legendary film. And when I shoot that film, I'm telling you now, I'm going to have the finest girls you ever seen in your life, and I'm going to have the pretty boys in there too. Because in Mount Airy, we wanted to look good. We still wanted to fight. We wanted to be athletes. They were everything else. I mean, these pretty dudes wanted to be everything. You know, they wasn't uh, feminine at all. If people get that old idea, that, oh, you live in Uptown. It, dude, them dudes just fighting every. It was like a, a, a dad going, uh, what they call it, a reputation of fight. You know, people up there now, they're talking about, I'm 17 and 4. You know what I mean? Like they got boxing records. So don't, please don't think that you're going to get out of fighting in Philadelphia just because you went Uptown. We fought more with just to get a rap, like, as, as the saying go but the fly girls are right in the middle of all that and I captured it and now I want to capture it on screen and we're gonna have some of the flyest people you ever seen in your life in Philadelphia on screen because that's the way it was so I'm not trying to create something that wasn't there we were some fly jokers with fly haircuts looking good fighting going to the parties being athlete we wanted to be everything but that's how fly girl came about that moved to Mount Airy by the time we hit the 80s and the whole country got fly we were one of the flyest places on the planet. I'm here to tell you that. Mount Airy, West Oak Lane, and Germantown in Philadelphia. I always tell people, you know, when they ask me about my storytelling, I let them know that, you know, the position that I was born in my family allowed me to get more information as a young kid than young kids typically get. Uh, my mother was the oldest of eight out of the baby boom era. And my father was the oldest of four. And then I ended up being the oldest grandson. So with the oldest grandson, I had an uncle that was only two years older than me. <laughs> and he hated me calling him Uncle Joe because it was awkward. Hey, Uncle Joe, Uncle Joe. And he's two years, he's eight and I'm six and I'm calling him Uncle Joe. He hated it. But what happened was I was around aunts and uncles in the same household. We lived in an extended family, you know, many times where I'm with my grandmothers and my aunts and uncles. They weren't that much older than me. And they're doing a whole lot of stuff that a kid ain't supposed to see, ain't supposed to hear, ain't supposed to be around. But I was. 
And so even though I wasn't born in the baby boom era, I was around people who were, and they constantly had stories and stuff that was going on. And so I was this little kid in West Philadelphia with big ears and big eyes taking in everything. And then I had these two uncles in particular, Monte and Andre, who loved going to the movies. And uh, my mother had to go to work. And so Monte and Andre would say, hey, we watched The Nephew, but we want to go to the movies. And we ain't got no money. You know, so my mom would get them three, four dollars, whatever it was back in the 70s. And then they take me to the movies in West Philly. We walked up to the Capitol Center on Lancaster Avenue, walked all the way up there. And I'm the nephew, five, six, seven, eight years old. We go see triple features, kung fu movies. And then I memorize the whole movie and come out with voices in the whole nine. By the time we get back to West Philly, 38th Street, because the movie theater was on 52nd Street. We walk all the way up there. We get back and I got voices in my head. I'm doing all the scenes, the kung fu moves and all that. And my uncle starts saying, hey, let's get the nephew to tell that old man scene. Do the young boy scene. Do the girl scene. And so I was always a storyteller, man, from a young age. I was, came from a storytelling household. The McLaurins, which is my mother's family, they love movies. They come down to North Carolina on a train with movies. They take movies to the Dagon Hotel. They come over my house and want to be in the movie room. And sometimes they want to go to the movies. So they are movie fanatics. I come from that family. And so, you know, I started writing, man, because, you know, I was good at it. I had all the details. I got to high school and I, I did what I call movie marathons. You go to the movies and uh, they got all the movies lined up, like eight different theaters. I'm not paying for five and six of them. I'm gonna go in there and pay for one and you sneak in the next movie, sneak in the next. So I was going to, I go to the movies 12, 12 noon and come out like eight o'clock. I saw four movies and my friends like, yo man, I'm not doing that no more. We want to go to the mall. We want to talk to some girls. And I'm like, them girls still going to be there when we come out of the movies at eight. Then we going to go to the party. So I'm not going to miss anything. Y'all in here scared of them girls anyway. You know, so I was the dude that had all the details, all the storytelling, and it kept going. And then once I got to the college level and I learned how to write the stories instead of being verbal, because most black people are verbal with it, they're telling stories verbally. You know, just like you do in music, uh, just like a storyteller would do in any hood. But I started writing them down once I got to college and they asked me about my writing skills and wanted to see what the writing skills were. And that's where I first started writing, you know, my stories and then had the idea that, you know, I can write entire books. And it uh, started from there. But I was always a storyteller, dude. It's just a gift that I had. I come from a storytelling family. And uh, now I'm trans transitioning from the, the book telling to the, the music, I've been doing that. And then the movies, I did a couple movies already. I'm about to do bigger ones, more movies. So it's that storytelling thing, man, it's just in me. I was born with it and I didn't run away from it. You got a lot of people that's coulda, woulda, shoulda people. I became what I was supposed to be.